The way artists often express the way they think about a particular subject is through the use of words or songs, mostly to describe a specific feeling or thoughts towards something. For example, poets use words and sentences in order to describe a feeling. Whether it is a content or overwhelmed type of feeling, their words give actual meaning to their situations. When people are more visually oriented, the words tend to result meaningless. Visual art is one of the many types of art that people can look at instead of looking at textual art. Not all types of art are meant for everybody and that is the art of it. To get people to look at different pieces and contributing with their unique feelings towards the same piece. Personally, I am very visually oriented because I tend to relate pictures to whatever I am trying to learn or remember. Also, I have a very high appreciation to art from all over the world because of how different they could be and still be able to portray a message or a feeling that can be transmitted in so many ways, from the colors being used, to the thickness or thinness of the paint stroke, and to many more things. I have visited the Getty Museum in Los Angeles, California, where I got to see so many great pieces of art, all distinguishable from others, from different colors to the different styles that makes them unique and, of course, the times that these were created. One of the artists whose painting is displayed at the Getty Museum is very well known by a lot of people is Vincent van Gogh. The painting displayed is Tyrell irises painted in 1889. One of the four irises done by van Gogh because he did different versions of it. Simply speaking, one can see an oil painting on canvas where the audience sees a piece of red soil with blue flowers dominating the view. A single white flower on the left side of the painting and on the upper left corner there are some small orange flowers. This painting of flowers might seem a little too dramatic to the eye because of the number of flowers and greenery there is. One can conclude that this piece of art is pretty and gives off a calm vibe. In reality, there is very little happiness to this painting as it is difficult for some to believe. Some history background for irises is one of the 130 paintings that Van Gogh worked on. Van Gogh painted irises during his stay at the Mental Asylum in France in 1889, at the garden he was allowed to go out to. The Van Gogh Museum website provides a deeper description on how he committed self-harm during an episode of madness. Vincent Van Gogh cut off his left ear when temper flares with Paul Gauguin, the artist with whom he had been working for a while in Arles. Van Gogh's illness revealed itself. He began to hallucinate and suffered attacks in which he lost consciousness. During one of these attacks, he used a knife. He could later recall nothing about the event. The painting Irises is definitely one of my favorite paintings of Van Gogh, and to me, everything in this piece has a significant meaning. Starting from the most obvious, the blue flowers, which each and every petal has its own shape and color, and are standing tall from their stems. Also, Almost every flower has bold outlines signifying the structure of the experience, which would be the flower. And some leaves don't even have a highlight, meaning they're just flat areas of color with no dimension, though Van Gogh manages to still give life to his surreal art. The white iris on the left side signifies a sense of purity and calmness to his painting. And the red soil shows the strength of the history from his past that made the melancholic experiences symbolize as blue irises that have grown from time to time. The painting irises is indeed evidence of Van Gogh's state of mind. Another piece of art that also speaks without words that is displayed at the Getty Museum is titled Starry Night by Edvard Munch, painted in 1893. The most known Starry Night by a lot of people is the painting by Vincent Van Gogh, and as many of the viewers know, the colors and styles portrayed are very significant to Van Gogh's life. However, the painting by Edvard Munch is as significant to his life as it is for Van Gogh because of the style and background it has provided. As well as Van Gogh's Starry Night, Munch's painting brings the viewer some uncertainty to the eye. At first glance, one can see a white fan surrounding some bushes. One can also admire the shore that smoothly fuses into the sky and the trees with the ground. What is very distracting, perhaps, is the mysterious mountain light figure surrounded by the white fans mentioned earlier at the right side of the painting. This night landscape represents the coastline as at Atgestrand, a small beach resort south of Oslo in Norway, where Edvard Munch spent his summers from the 1880s onward. 
according to the Getty Museum description displayed along with the painting. This painting gives a very heavy and pessimistic vibe. There isn't much light to this painting and the only source of light there could be is the moon. However, the moon seems to be hidden behind the heavy clouds and the stars are barely there. This signifies his sadness and loneliness he might have been feeling during this time. Regarding the colors and techniques used in Starry Night by Edward Munch, the dominating color is a dark blue and some blue mixed with black to create the ground and the mysterious mountain-like figure on the right. This painting seems nostalgic in a way, as if er Edward was looking at the seashore and wondering how it all happened. The seashore and the line where the sky and the sea meet are going toward a vanishing on the right side of the horizon line, a vanishing point. On the other hand, one can see that the white fans depicted is pointing towards the opposite direction and the imaginary line that this fence creates fuses on the left side of the horizon. Furthermore, it is the feeling of unsureness and nostalgic thoughts that this painting gives off. Because when we think of these two imaginary lines mentioned above and we put them together, they create a cross or perpendicular lines in the middle of the picture. This in a way symbolizes that the, he's not someone that is easily approachable and his thoughts are not to be shared with anybody. Therefore, he paints his feelings away. Both art pieces show the dramatic sides of each of the artist's lives and are shown by their colors and figures in their paintings. Something interesting to realize is that if it wasn't for what these men, talented men, perhaps, were facing, these paintings wouldn't even exist. As I was looking through the Live Journal website, I got to read the poem by John Heath titled Ode on Melancholy, where he talks about his life tragedies and how he w we take our unfortunate for granted. Tragedies are often viewed as something negative, obviously. However, those who take advantage of periods like these get the most out of their life. Many people have studied Keith's poem, and specifically for this one, the author Eric G. Wilson on his book Against Happiness, he breaks down Keith's poem, and he shows the readers his point. He proves his point. Throughout the part where Eric G. Wilson describes John Keith, he sees him as an ambitious man. However, he was not able to fulfill his desires because his family passed away, never got to marry the love of his life, died a virgin, his health deteriorated, but during his tragedies may Keats remain positive. So, Wilson uses him as an example of motivation from melancholy. Such calamities should have left him in perditions, but he was always ready to take on whatever was next. Just as Vincent van Gogh and Edvard Munch, they were not in their perfect state of mind, but managed to get something beautiful from their calamities, which are their artworks. As the Live Journal website mentions, art itself does not heal. It is a vehicle for healing. Just as there is connection between mental disorders and creative people, scientific studies pro prove how art in its various incarnations aids the healing process. One must come to grips with the darkness within and it is foolish to pretend it does not exist.